Can I ask you this question? Can you praise God uh, uh, when you're having difficult moments? When winds are howling and blowing your stuff to and fro? Or are you just a fair weather pastor? Are you just a fair weather CEO? Uh, a fair weather boss? Uh, are you just a fair weather husband and wife? Are you just a fair weather friend? You're my friend when the weather is fair. Or we love each other when the weather is fair. Why do we as the people of God get so anxious uh, even though we know Jesus is on board? Because understand, when Paul is writing this, when he's writing this epistle, he's writing it to the people of God. He's not writing it to the world. He's not writing it to sinners. He's writing it to the people of God. He's telling the people of God, why are you so anxious? Be anxious for nothing. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, he says, and again I say, rejoice. Um, the disciples in that particular moment, while the storm was happening, they began to question God's love. Do you even care that this is going on? They shifted from the problem at hand to now questioning the love of Jesus. Why do we do that when we're going through a difficult time? Uh, even in our marriage, we shift from the problem to a question of love. And then we begin to focus on something that wasn't originally the problem and now we never solve the problem because now we have to combat something we already know that this, this is not a matter of love. I love you so let's deal with the problem. Let me ask you a question. Has it ever dawned on you that nothing has ever dawned on God? This pandemic virus is not taking God by surprise. Bible speaks of this. Jesus wakes up and he rebukes the storm and they marvel. But the interesting thing is that it's not what he spoke to. But I heard someone say it's where he spoke from. Jesus could speak to the storm because uh, he could speak to the storm. He could speak peace to the storm. It's because he spoke from the place of peace. He was the prince of peace. He is the king of peace is after the order of Melchizedek, which is the king of Salem, which Salem means in the Greek peace. He's the king of peace. Understand, you cannot speak peace to your storms when you have chaos in your heart. A ship is designed to flow even though water is all around, even though waves are all around. A ship is designed to float on water as long as the water remains on the outside. But if that water begins to get on the inside, the ship is going to go down. Don't allow anxiety to build up on the inside. Don't allow fear to build up on the inside because when that happens, the ship goes down. But you have to trust God through this process of your life. You were designed to navigate through storms. God has given us all the where we fall. And so uh, my prayer today is, and then the word today is, hey, let's keep coming. Let's take every precaution that the CDC has given us to take. Of course, I said this in a message a long time ago. Some of, uh, sometimes the most spiritual thing you can do in a crisis 
the most spiritual thing you can do that's going to mess some of you up is to rest. Get some sleep. <laughs> uh, get you something to eat. Remain calm. That means celebrate what God has already done. Continue to ask. Ask him for guidance, direction, wisdom, clarity. Leave your worries behind. The Bible says, cast your cares to God for he cares for you. And meditate on the word of God. Meditate on the word of God. Uh, meditate is a, what, like uh, the word where we say to masticate your food. Um, if you think of sheep and sheep, they, they're eating the food. And, and what sheep will do is that when, even when they go to sleep, they'll leave food in the pockets of their mouths. And even as they're laying, and uh, later on, they'll begin to, you'll see them chew again. You know, that's called masticating their food. They're chewing it again food that's more in the pockets of their mouths and that's what to meditate on after you read it after you chew on it rest and chew it again meditate on it again this is a good time to meditate on the promises of God uh, that he cares for us we're going to get to the other side we're going to make it God has made us some promises God is not a man that he shall lie, nor the son of man that he'll repent. If he said it, we're going to experience it. And so, this is my word to you. Let's keep calm in this situation. Let's follow the instructions. Let's get some rest. Let's eat. Let's spend time with our families. Let's wash our hands. Keep them away from your face. Certainly your nose, I mean. Sometimes I believe there are some things that you shouldn't have to say. But there are some, even God, even in the Bible, there are some things that, in my opinion, God didn't have to tell me because there's no way. But sometimes you just have to tell folk that, you know, just as a reminder. So um, I want to say rejoice. That is our prescription plan. Rejoice and be calm. Amen. God bless you. Until we meet again, may heaven smile upon you.